This panel is uh, about the challenge of education. But not really. The point uh, is that life is challenged in this planet. And uh, most of the tremendous challenges come uh, from the intelligent species, self appointed us, our behavior. And uh, education uh, challenge uh, is to help us to deal effectively with the challenge that are facing us and it will impact us uh, tremendously or moderately depending on uh, our capacity to be in touch with the reality, understand uh, our responsibility and uh, gather the ability to respond uh, more effectively than they have been doing now. So, big challenge. But the fault uh, is not education, it's humans. Uh, uh, and uh, education is a show, social construction of society. We have uh, three distinguished uh, uh, speaker here, and the first uh, would be Emil Constantinescu, the first uh, democratic uh, president that Romania had elected, uh, but he was the rector of Bucharest University. Just uh, recently, his government uh, has uh, made a law where he has a tremendous building, uh, a lot of employees uh, to bring uh, a better future, not only to Romania, the whole area of Byzantium, but uh, hopefully the planet. So, Emil, please. Thank you, Chairman, <laughs> dear colleagues uh, and friends. Almost uh, half a century ago, uh, Pink Floyd uh, Band had an explosive uh, uh, success uh, with their song entitled We Don't Need No Education. In uh, 1968, students on the riot in American campuses or in the great European universities were shouting as democratically as possible, il est interdit d'interdire, militated against uh, the Vietnam War. They uh, were also protesting against the famous traditional causes, such as uh, archaeology or classical languages. In March uh, 2006 in Paris, young rebel crows had set on fire not only cars and police stations, but also set on fire schools and destroyed university buildings, starting with the Sorbonne old symbol of the Republic of Philology in Europe and the an entire world. <coughs> Consequently, democracy generated today policies uh, that led uh, to an unprecedented expansion of the education as a system, but also to anarchical protest against the expanding system. But why was it so? The higher education for a democratic society in the 21st century is a topic we can talk about either in prefabricated and politically correct formulas or, on the contrary, we can profoundly reflect upon it in an attempt to comprehend not only what connects the two concepts, democracy and higher education, but also what might disconnect them and even contradict them. What do we uh, democratic uh, university people need to do if we wish these two concepts to enhance each other? Uh, I believe that we should start by elaborating a few theses, which we can then debate further. I would like to propose a few axes for this debate. The first refers to upstream education, related to 
the academic stage, the way past and social environment put a mark on the university. The second examines the contribution of university to democracy with the societies which developed them, meaning at downstream of university. And the third would refer to universities themselves and their perspectives in a society of knowledge and of a real democracy as we all undoubtedly uh, desire. We can understand that it is uh, natural for any educational uh, process to meet a certain <coughs> resistance from its uh, beneficiaries. We can understand that the European teenagers and youth aspire to have all the advantages of a competitive world, but they refuse percentages. We can notice that in a society that made higher education its uh, main social elevator, education is challenged at the very moment when the elevator does not function anymore. We may get sad, or we can try to start the discussion over from its beginnings in the 19th century, a century that empowered education and most particularly <coughs> academic education with the position of engine of the bureaucratic, meritocratic system, which it uh, proposed instead of hereditary habits <coughs> of the old aristocratic regime. It may be possible that uh, hostility against school, as it sometimes appears nowadays to arise also from the fact that the educational system is disconnected from the realities of contemporary society. I do not refer here uh, to the often called, called upon adjustments to the labor market requirements. Numerous experiences and experiments have proven that the maximum adaptation to these exigencies is not shown by the young beneficiaries of the yearly specialized education. Either we talk about IT or other modes of specialization, but on the contrary, by those who have passed through a training intelligently centered on the traditional fundamentals of science and culture and who gave thus a flexibility that allows them to further choose to the highest fields for their professional career. In order to avoid these expensive confusions, we must reinvent the school so that it will know how to preserve and use its passionate interest for exploration, for the novelty and for knowledge. It must be a school that transforms every child's passion for stories into an ability to use proper words. It must be a school that puts in service of the didactic process all the childhood colorful fantasies and the explosive inventiveness of the teenage. Briefly, it is about the school of the joy of learning. Such a school integrates and does not compete with the almost infinite information means that the today's society generates continuously. We will have to reinvent school so that it will not exclude, but include. It will take into account every child's and teenager's talents so as to offer him or her a customized path that will yield his or her personality to the full. Under present circumstances of the informatics and informational revolution, the biggest effort necessary to reinvent radically the schools is not the one involving economic effort, but one concerning the intellectual endeavor. Universities, which are at the same time beneficiaries of the educational process and its latest scorer, have the duty to reflect upon this vital issue and to fight for a real democracy that is based on knowledge and for a new humanism 
capable of radically rebuilding our contemporary society. Dear friends, will this process be adopted by our democracies? Will the families, the local communities, the mayors, the local administration, the government, parliament, will they be willing to take into change to support and finance such a radical reform? To open the way of an adapted, flexible education, able to move itself of any child, adolescent, adults on third age, active people's needs and potential. The university, conceived as a great form, will last as a part of the democratic world as long as it will continue to promote critical thinking, reason, pluralism, human values. The confrontation of ideas in a critical, rational manner requires not only to accept differences, but also to pay rightful attention to other rules. Because concept and experience might become obsolete if there is no interest, interrogation, and freshness of the used thinking to give debates color and to generate novelty, meaning the creative technologies needed in a knowledge society. We live in a world seeming to prove the triumph of democracy, freedom, and cooperation. An open world, a world of constant communication and interaction, a world whose perpetual motion cannot be stopped, and where isolation would mean a form of collective suicide. Yet, this world is not yet ready for globalization. If we want to understand why it would be the right moment for us to turn to the university prospective mission, it is a moment when the university should find in itself the necessary resources to give a new impulse to the world we live in. Academic institutions identity and role within the assessment and 21st century challenges no longer need to be demonstrated. Specialists we educate today will be active until 2050-2060, so their projective capacity represents an indispensable component in this process. In this sense, adopting a development, development strategy requires a few prior clarification regarding anticipating. The general framework of the society evolution, the forecasting of supply-demand ratio, of the academic capitalization valorization, the assessment of human potential and material resources. Dear colleagues and friends, my generation left many questions unanswered. I have no regrets for. If a new generation will ask the same questions, the answers will undoubtedly be different from the ones we could have delivered, as the world we wish to live in has changed. We sought answers to what we hoped to be a world of certainties. The only thing we know for sure today is that this will, world will be a world of uncertainties. And that answers to the exact same questions will change more rapidly than we could have imaginated. Professors, researchers, and university graduates are today the measure of future. Thus, university may be considered an essential partner in the endeavor of shaping the future.